Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Rhythm Gnomes Live. This is Sharon Oyella, and this is part three of a series that I'm in the middle of filming of me building this gnome home. Okay, if you missed part one, just to recap, I had spent about eight to ten years building my original gnome home, and in the end, it, I built it so large and so heavy I couldn't move it out a door. So it was impractical to keep, so I took it apart, and I scrapped that home altogether. I do have videos on this channel of the gnome home tour and I'll link those in the pinned comment below so you can check that home out. So the purpose of this build here is to rebuild that same sort of home but do it in a way that I can take it all apart, move it out a door and then put it all back together again and this way it can get as large as it wants to get because I build and I build and I build and I find it hard to stop building once I start a project like this. So this will be going on for a while. There's only three videos at the time of this introduction. I only have three videos for this uh, so far. There's going to be more coming. So part one was me building the structure. I showed you how I did interlocking bark. Part two I worked on some interior walls and part three, the one you're watching right now, is going to be all about the bark. Also, I'm going to finish off this door right here. And I'm super excited to bring you this video because I believe, and this is my opinion, <laughs> that this is going to be the best bark video I've ever put out there. Now, I've done a, a number of bark videos over the years, and they've all been successful, but I do believe this is going to be the best one yet. So if you've watched one of my bark videos in the past, and you found little squares or little design left from the paper towel after it's dry, and you don't know how to get rid of that, I know how to get rid of it now, and I can't wait to share that with you, because that happened to me in this project. So we're gonna tackle all that today. So what you're gonna need to build your bark is foil. Make sure it doesn't say non-stick, because you need masking tape to stick to it. And I'm using the super strong foil. If you use a very cheap foil, then you probably will have to use more than I do in this video. To make the texture of the bark, we're gonna use paper towels and white glue. Make sure your paper towels are not three ply, but if that's all you have on hand, just pull off one of the plies. And the colors that I'm using in this video are all acrylic craft paints in black, burnt umber, cinnamon brown, and beige. That is all we need to say, and we can get right back into the tree now. I hope you guys enjoy. If you find the video helpful, don't forget to give that thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. Comment, share with your friends, and above all else, have a lot of fun. We are about to start on this door. I'm going to show you how I cut the hole in there, how I put a little spacer in and kept the width of my door. But I want to explain that in the next clip, you're going to see this structure without bark on it. But the structure behind it, this side and this side, has bark on it and it's dry. And I did that on purpose because there is going to be a little bit of shrinkage as the paper towel dries. Okay, so you want, if you're building two pieces to interlock together, you want the, one of the pieces to be on and dried. And then you can stick your second piece in, slide it in, you know this piece isn't going to shrink anymore. And then this one will have a better chance of interlocking, a much better fit once everything is dry. So now I'm going to add a door hole and you know you can do this before or after and if you can plan these things out in advance then it would save you a lot of time. I'm more of a visual person and normally I don't add windows and doors until everything's been painted already. Uh, my hat's off to those who are creative enough to figure it out before, before the paint. Anyway I'm just making sure that this door will fit my gnome and I had to widen it up a little bit as you saw. Any exposed foil must be covered up with the tape again. To keep the distance in that door, the width of the door, I'm going to add some cardboard here at the bottom and then tape this into place so the whole structure itself doesn't collapse on itself and it will maintain that door space. So I'm just going to tape this down to my cardboard piece, make sure it stays put. And a good time to add here, if you're putting in cardboard like I'm doing here, I normally will cover this up with masking tape, the whole cardboard piece and that just keeps it from being exposed too much to any dampness because I'm going to be working with glue and water. It will drip down into that cardboard piece. I don't want it warping so I'll just cover the entire thing up with masking tape. And now we're going to apply the bark. I've already worked on the bottom floor and the top floor and we're going to do the middle section together. I'm going to have a big stack of paper towels ready to go. I've torn the top and the bottom. Very important to do that. Don't have to worry about the sides because that's the part that's going to get squished up. And I also want to have some shorter pieces beside me to work with as well. So I'm just going to do a stack here and then uh, tear those in half. So I don't measure anything like I said previously, but for your benefit, I'm just going to put three cups of glue into this bowl and then a cup of water. So that's exactly what I did for the walls. You can add more water if you want to. It, it will make the glue runnier and it'll take longer to dry. Uh, so I find this mixture here about right. And as always, I just go by feel. 
So a little bit more water in that mixture is not going to hurt anything. A little less water is not going to hurt anything either. It'll just make it harder for you to pull the glue off the paper towel. Right, and I'm going to set my little section here on top of a bucket so it's at a better height to work with. And it doesn't matter where I start. I'm just making sure all that uh, tape is pushed down, nothing's sticking up, and all the foil is covered. And everything looks good so I can get started. And I start by laying one piece on top of the glue. Fold the dry sides together and pull off the excess glue. And now I'll just use my hand to make sure the entire piece is wet with the glue. Now I'm going to place it on and I'm going to squish this up, like scrunching it along the sides to make like a bark-like texture. And while you're adding in those uh, lines and wonderful texture for the bark, make sure that you're working out air bubbles at the same time. Okay, that piece is on. Now I'm ready for the second piece. And the second piece, when I put this on, is going to overlap the first piece just a little bit along the side. And I'm pulling it up there because it has to go over the bit that's protruding out the top. So I want to make sure that's all covered as well. And then I'll squish this up side to side. It doesn't matter if you add a second piece and you're not overlapping the first. It doesn't matter. You can always add a third piece over top those seams. So it's not imperative. It's just something that I do as I go. All right, now the shorter section, I'm going to overlap the um, bottom piece, of course. And you see where the line is at the top there? I'm going to really work that in so I don't see any lines when I'm all done. You might see a slight line, but it's, it's nothing major. When we're done painting and everything and maybe adding some mushrooms or moss, we can cover anything that doesn't look right up. And now I'll cover up that big gap that I had, and you can see it doesn't really matter if you have a seam or not. You can just uh, add right over top of that. And now that side is done. Now I'm going to add a little knot. And I do this by taking a piece of towel and tearing it down. And I'm just going to go around in a circular type motion. You can make these as big or as small as you want to. They're always fun to paint too when they're dry. <laughs> I love knot holes. And not every knot hole that you create is going to turn out perfectly once the paper towel is dry and you've painted, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. Once I paint the tree, I'm going to come back to this knot and I'm going to make this one better. All right, so I thought this was a good spot here to add another little knot, knot hole. It looks like a branch that just got cut off there. I absolutely love this. It's going to look fantastic once it's all painted. And you can add branches this way too, guys. All right, so you saw me putting the paper towel in here. And here was that little broken branch with the knot hole I was excited about. And finished up this little section. I'm not working on the back right now. I explained that in part one. I'm just doing the front part for your benefit. And we're going to be working on this for a few months to come yet. <laughs> anyway, I'm in the next clip, we're going to be working back on the door. And in part one, I had already put paper towel without texture on the back here. And now I had worked on my little window in the door. So I needed to cover that up with more um, paper towel. So that's what's happening here in the next clip. If you're taping over a uh, paper towel that you've already dried in the back, the tape will not stick to it. But don't worry, because we're going to be covering this up with more paper towel. You just want to make sure that you overlap those seams and then that will keep everything in place. Um, the tape will not stick to previously glued down paper towel. So I'm going to make sure when I'm putting my paper towel over this part that I'm covering up all the um, overlap of that tape. So I'm going way over that tape there, the where it, where it ends. So once the paper towel is dry, everything is one solid piece again. Yeah, so very important to overlap seams by quite a bit then you don't have anything sticking up later on down the road. But if you do, it's not a it's not a problem. You can always just get more paper towel and cover up anything that's sticking up. Let it dry and then go ahead and paint it. When I show you how to paint the bark, you'll see how uh, the colors that I use, you can add on to at any time and you'll never know where you stopped and started. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm adding some bark to the front of this uh, door piece. I find working on bark like this, once you get a rhythm going, it's, it goes quite quickly and I find it very therapeutic <laughs> as I'm crafting, as many of you can relate. Um, I could spend hours doing this. Your hands get messy and all that, but that's part of the fun. All right, so you can see uh, the way I applied the paper towel, I ended up with a seam going right across. I don't want that seam there. So I'm gonna take another piece 
and every section or, or so, I'm just going to cover up the very middle seam. Uh, the top and bottom of this piece here, I'm just going to make sure to work that right in with my fingernail. And once it's dried and painted, um, they virtually disappear. You might see, if you're really looking closely, you might see a little seam there. But you definitely don't want one gigantic seam going right across your tree. <laughs> that will never, never turn out good. But if you cover them up, like I'm doing there, those will pretty much disappear. If you have a hot sunny day, stick your piece outside and let it dry in the sun. If not, I would suggest fans. This will cut the drying time down immensely. Without fans, it takes a really long time for this paper towel to dry. All right, and the other thing I want to mention is as the paper towel dries, it turns into the color of the masking tape behind it. All the white that you see there is still wet glue underneath, but this is dry to the touch. Once your paper towel is dry to the touch, you can go ahead and paint it. And that's what we're gonna do next. All my bark starts off with a black wash and a black wash is paint mixed with water. So we're gonna take one container of this paint, put it in my cup, and then I filled up this container with water right to the top and I'm gonna mix those two together. And this will make it easier for the black paint to get into every little nook and cranny of this bark. It's very splashy though, this watered down paint, so you wanna make sure you protect your workspace around it. It will splash quite a bit actually. <laughs> And I'm not very careful and I ended up with a huge mess all around this tree when I was done. Okay, so when the black wash is dry, uh, turn your piece left and right and look and you'll see little white parts. Take a smaller brush and fill those in. All right, my friends, this is the paper towel from the dollar store and you can see there's no squares or little dots left behind. Uh, now that my black wash has been dried. So I could continue on now with the color. And if your paper towel looks like this, then I would skip the next part and just head into the color part. You can use the timestamps below. But if your paper towel left behind little squares like this, this will show up in your finished paint. You can see with the bark paint on there, I can still see those squares. And for me, that's a problem. And I left this up here for your benefit, but I did fix below this area. So you can see all those squares up there. But down here in the front of my tree looks wonderful. There's no squares left behind and that's because I used the textured paint. All right guys, we are gonna fix those squares using baking soda, making a texture paint. Just a heads up before we get started, don't use more than I show you in this video, okay? So, so it's gonna be about five to six teaspoons of baking soda per two ounces of paint. Now that's a lot still, but that is what I've used on this tree. I've let this tree, after I've uh, put the texture paint on, I've let it sit for a week before I release this video just to see what would happen and if there was any issues that I, I needed to tell you about. And from what I see, it works perfectly. I love it. And I, it's probably because it's a layered paint. Like after I do the, uh, the texture paint on here, then I put other paint on top so there's no problems. If you watched part two of this series, you would have known that uh, when I did the bottom floor with texture paint, that there was no problem. But when I did the second floor, I put a whole lot more baking soda than I did in the previous floor. And after the paint was dry, there was a film left over the entire wall, which was easily fixed just by washing it off with water, okay, a cloth in water. And it all that is is just the sodium coming to the surface. So, I mean, it's not a problem. In the end, you can just wash it off with water, so it's not an issue. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have issues in the bark um, before I released this video. Now on Facebook, uh, somebody did comment that they use baby powder to make textured paint. I have not done that myself, so I'm not gonna give any opinions about it. If you're interested in seeing how that works, then you can just Google that or Google how to make texture paint and you can come up with your own idea. But for me, this works great and I'll be using it in the future. So I just wanted to give you that heads up before we get started. All right, so if you do have those uh, little squares in your paper towel or any design you wanna cover up, then I'm gonna take two ounces of this black paint. I'm gonna pour the whole thing into this bowl and then I'm gonna add about five or six teaspoons of baking soda. And I'm gonna mix that up really well. You wanna make sure that there's no powder left when you're done mixing. And then you see here where there's a, a large area of squares, I'm gonna concentrate on that area and I'm just gonna cover in those squares. It goes on fairly thick. I love this texture paint because you can, when you're all done, if you wanna just add a little bit of a design, you can uh, dot your brush, you know, it kinda of makes like a little bit of a rough spot on your bark. There I go, I'm dabbing in a little bit of texture there, a little bit of extra texture, I should say. All right guys, I'm just jumping in with a quick edit. 
your black wash paint should still be done even if you're going to be using the baking soda to cover up the squares because you need to get that black paint into all the little nooks and crannies and you can't do that with texture paint, okay? And then when it's all dry, you can see the difference that that makes. All those little squares are now gone, the majority of them anyway. I didn't worry about covering up every square because some of those squares do add a texture of their own, but for the most part, I did cover up the majority of them. So let's take a look at the before and the after with the texture paint. All right, once that's dry, then you take burnt umber and I'm not doing a solid color of burnt umber. I'm going to dip my brush, get the majority off there, and just painting over the surface, but I'm not gonna get into all the little cracks. So when I'm done here, some of that black is gonna be still showing through, and that's what I want. I don't want a solid burnt umber. When you use the four colors that I give you in this video, like I said earlier, you can add on at any time, and no one will ever know where you stopped and started. And this technique of layering paint has evolved over 10 years of working on trees. Uh, when I first started painting my trees, I hated the color I was getting, and that was because I was doing solid colors instead of layering it the way I'm showing you in this video. So trial and error have gone into this technique. And you can do gray trees, and I've done that as well. Uh, you just swap out the brown colors for more gray tones. All right, so once that's dry to the touch, and it doesn't take very long at all, I'm going to take cinnamon brown. And I'm not cleaning my brush in between, I'm just keeping it from drying out. So get the paint on there, get the majority off, and just go over the surface. Make sure that you don't get in all those cracks. Uh, when you do the burnt umber, you want some of the black to show behind. When you do the cinnamon brown, you want some of the burnt umber to show behind. That gives the tree a lot of depth and um, a more realistic look. Once the cinnamon brown is dry to the touch, go ahead and take some beige. And this one, you want very little on your brush. So I dipped it in, but got most of the paint off my brush. And I'm just highlighting. So I'm just gently going over the surface here just to catch the parts that are protruding outward, just catching those and highlighting them. This is where the magic starts to happen. You'll see your tree come to life. I love this part. All right, once you got the highlights done and those are dry, then we can move on to low lighting. And that's just shadowing out some crevices of the tree. It gives it a lot more depth. So I'm using straight black. This is not watered down. This is straight black and a stiff brush, a smaller brush. And I'm just going to get into little nooks and crannies with this brush. I'm not going to be doing like whole solid colors everywhere. I'm just going to take a spot that I think should have a little bit more depth and I'm going to shadow it out with the black paint. And you'll notice when you're doing this that it starts looking like it has a lot more depth. Just like the highlighting, the low lighting is very important. And in the end, you're going to have a tree that looks like the bark is pretty deep in some areas and a little bit more shallow in other areas. But just like a real tree, you've got a lot of things going on there that are created with a little bit of illusion. All right, like I said earlier, if you have a knot hole that you want to enhance and make it a little bit bigger, you can do that even after your tree has been painted. Just take a bit of foil and you're going to hot glue that over the knot. And then cover that in the masking tape. Cover up all the exposed foil with the masking tape. And then use smaller pieces of paper towel. And then you just go over the entire piece, make, making sure to overlap the knot itself that you added and the tree. So you want to overlap a little bit there so they all become one piece once the paper towel is dry. Then you just go ahead after everything is dry and paint it just like I showed you how to do with the tree. All right, guys, we are almost done with this video, but I just want to give you one more option here because in the past when I've built uh, bark on my trees, I've always used a paper towel that left no design in it when it was done and painted, and I was happy with that, looked great, and I moved on. But since this project, I had to fix those little squares and add texture paint, I have fallen in love with the results that I've gotten. I'm, I'm just in love with that, and I'll be using it now. Every time I build a tree, I'll be using that texture paint to add extra texture. So what I've done is I've taken this little guy here. I used the paper towel that I used to use in the past, and there was no design left. And I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's all done. And you can see that you don't need to add anything extra to it. I have since added some extra texture, and we're going to come back and look closely at that at the end.
But I just want to give you the option. If you want to add extra texture like I'm going to be doing, you can do that or leave it as is. All right, so here is the project that I used the uh, paper towel that left no design in it, and I painted it, and I'm happy with how it looks. I'm going to turn it all around here so you can see every part of it. There's little areas that I went really quickly on, and it looks like little bunched up pieces of paper towel. <laughs> but it's because I was filming really fast this, uh, this tree here, so I didn't take my time. But it looks great, I think, as is. So now I'm going to mix up my texture paint and my black paint bottle is empty and that's a two ounce bottle. So I'm just going to fill it up to make sure that I have the right amount. So I'm going to make sure this is two ounces here. So fill this up to the top and dump that into the bowl. And then I'm going to put five or six teaspoons of baking soda into that bowl and I'm going to mix it up thoroughly so there's no powder left when I'm done. And now I'm going to take my project. I'm not going to cover the entire project with this texture paint. I'm just going to put it here and there just to add texture and different parts, not the entire thing. I think this is a great effect. I did this on the big tree and I, I just love the results. And I had some left over, so I went ahead and fixed that door, the top of the door and the side of the door. So now that it's dry, I can go ahead and paint it just like I showed you previously. You just go over it with the burnt umber, cinnamon brown and the beige. And then when you're all done with the color, then you of course do the shadowing. So black wash, burnt umber, cinnamon brown, beige, and then you do the shadowing out in those little nooks and crannies. And you do that every time you add to your tree or take something away and you're fixing it, you want to do the same technique on that area. And of course, when you're painting your part that you fixed, you're going to be overlapping that paint a little bit. So everything kind of ties in together. Once it's all dry, you'll never know where you stopped or where you started. I just love it. Wow, that looks really great. And you can see I didn't have to cover the entire piece with the texture paint. Just some here and there. That looks great. And of course you're enhancing all of it as well with your uh, highlighting and low lighting. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you're as excited as I am about this added texture that we get to put in our bark now. I just love that. If you do try out the technique, I would love to hear your results. You can leave me a comment or if you have a channel yourself, you can leave me a link in the comments below. Alright, in the next video we're going to be doing some stonework in the floors and I'm going to show you how to do that with some paper cup trays. And until then, we'll see you in the next one.